Welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here, and welcome to another video. This video came about because of some comments. I've been reading through the comments for this uh, particular build here, which is the uh, sweeping elbow but the bend version, and then the one before that, which was the sweeping elbow, but what I did was uh, cut a bunch of uh, acrylic tubing at various angles and got a gradual, but not as gradual a, a sweeping elbow as this. And people are concerned or interested in uh, bubble size, uh, whether or not this elbow here would be better or worse than the other one I made, and uh, just a bunch of general interest in uh, what you can get out of them. So what I decided to do initially was just I started playing around with it and uh, seeing like if there was anything to it, anything, anything interesting uh, in the differences between them all. And some interesting results came up. So what I did is I'm going to do, uh, I put together a comparison. A comparison between the 90, which is uh, technically the worst possible uh, for backup pressure. I mean, without getting into some, you know, stupid plumbing where you're going back and forth and up and down and, you know, doing things like that. Uh, just a straight 90. And uh, the segmented uh, sweeping elbow and this gradual bend one. I... Uh, also changed a couple of other things, um, but that'll come up later on. I wanted to eliminate as many variables as possible because uh, after one comment, I went back and checked in uh, the footage for uh, this particular, uh, like the segmented one, and there was a bit of difference in it. Oh, well, by the way, this is where I put this uh, filter. I stuck it in uh, the dirtiest tank I have, which is for breeding plecos. You can see it's uh, nice and dirty, and it's doing wonderful. But whether or not it is more efficient uh, than just this regular box filter is yet to be seen. So to get rid of as many variables as possible, what I did is I got a dedicated pump for the tests. So this is the regular air pump. Uh, so we won't have any difference in air pressure between uh, the air stone and the non-air stone because uh, in a system like the, the rack with the a bunch of airlines coming off one uh, feed if you end up creating a bit of a backup in one of them the air will just you know bleed off into another section so it wouldn't be a fair test this way it all has to go through this so what i'm going to do is each of these three pipes i'm going to test uh, we're going to hook up uh, initially i'm going to go with the air stone and then nothing changing except i'm going to take the air stone off and we're going to see how that works so first we're gonna just do the anecdotal observational aspect of it like I like to do with these. Uh, so this is uh, a dedicated air pump uh, plugged in and this is the air stone, lots of nice uh, fine bubbles. Uh, more than fine enough for this. So what we're gonna do now is just gonna hook up each of these, uh, just gonna slide them over the tube and we're going to just have a look at it and see uh, what you guys think of how it looks just with uh, with this without actually timing anything but don't worry we are going to get to the timing of this and i noticed uh, first off that uh, the air stone uh, makes it slower this is just obviously just an observational it, it just for me it just seemed uh, it was less effective and i suspect the reason for that is that's a fairly chunky air stone i mean it's i've done these before and uh, it it's not like it blocking all the flow, but I think it is interfering with sufficient amount of the flow and it's just slowing it down. Now, it's not really possible uh, to get an air stone, uh, you know, that will be small enough that it won't do that. The only way that you can make this um, like less of an obtrusion would be to have, you know, a larger diameter pipe going to like I did before with other tests. And that's not really possible with the box filter without completely redesigning everything. So this is what it's going to be for this for now. And I am trying to hold everything at the exact same level. Uh, and uh, as far as that goes, I think I did a pretty good job this time. I think I messed up on one of them last time. Uh, but also you got to keep in mind as we go through this, uh, we will end up with some different numbers. And that's not because uh, there's a lot of variability in the testing, but because in this particular case we are using a different amount of air because we're using a, a, a one small pump instead of my big fish room pump. So here you go. This is 
obviously the big bubbles, uh, no restrictions whatsoever, and you can see there's more flow. And that's consistent with all three of them. And that's actually not really a big surprise. I've done a small bubble test versus large bubble test before, and this seems to be quite consistent. It seems that um, the big bubbles tend to uh, get the water flowing uh, more efficiently. Uh, it just seems to be the, the case. But again, part of that is due to uh, the airstone being part of an in inhibitor for water going by it. But unfortunately, that's just the way it is with these tubes. So this is the last one here. And then what we're going to do is uh, the same test as last time. What I'm going to do is get the same uh, container. It is a old peanut butter container from years and years ago. And what we're going to do is fill them up. And I am going to do my best here to make sure that they're all held at the same height. So we're here as a small bubbles and uh, exactly the same as with the anecdotal evidence. Except now what we're going to do is time it. And then I'm going to do each of them separately. And then what I'm going to do is run them all uh, side by side. And we'll see uh, what their times are and which one ends first. It's not actually a big surprise. I mean, there really isn't a lot of difference uh, between this run and the run I did before. Except, of course, we're doing one more pipe. And I'm not going to spoil any of the new stuff, but as far as the difference between this one and uh, the segmented uh, sweeping elbow, uh, obviously the segmented sweeping elbow is faster, and it's, it's just the way it is. I mean, it just simply um, gives you a better flow, it, it, and it is significant enough. And I'm not going to get into the argument again whether or not uh, that matters as far as is it does it make it better uh, for filtration because then you're getting into issues of uh, you know whether or not the filter can handle the extra flow and a bunch of other stuff and whether or not is it better to have the water take longer to pass by media and that kind of thing requires more of a long term setup and that's what that setting it up in that uh, tank with the uh, breeding placos is all about. That kind of thing will pan out in the next few months. And we'll be able to see if, again, it, it makes any difference. Unfortunately, again, it's going to be anecdotal. Uh, because, you know, it's I'd have to set up two identical aquariums with two identical box filters. One with a 90, one with um, a sweeping elbow. And then stock them with the exact same amount of fish. And see if there's any difference in chemistry. Which I doubt. And then also with whether or not there's going to be any difference in observational stuff. So that will require a, a much more elaborate setup and uh, not really available to me at this moment. So while I've been babbling on, uh, we've done the first two. And you can see they're, they're roughly the same kind of results I had last time with the other one being a little bit faster. And this was the interesting one. There really isn't that much difference between this and the segmented one. But... This one actually fills faster. Whether or not it's a significant amount is up to you guys to decide. Uh, but it is faster. Uh, you will see in the next segment of uh, on the video here, I'm going to do all three at once. And uh, we're going to uh, cut it so that they all start at the same time. And then I'm going to freeze them as they fill up. And we'll, you'll see how it is. I mean, it's just it's interesting. Which is <laughs> This is actually the thing that surprised me the most. So here we go, we're going to fill these up, and uh, the sweeping's on the far right, and then the 90, and of course the segment in the middle. And the segmented was 7% faster than the 90, which is a little slower than the other one, of course, but then again, we're using a different pump, remember. And then the sweeping elbow is 10% better, and, and also kind of keep in mind these are small bubbles versus large. So, I mean, this is slower, but the interesting thing is, I mean, it's only 3%, but even with the small the, the small bubbles, uh, the sweeping one with the bend is faster than the segmented one. And I wasn't really expecting that. I didn't think there'd be a significant difference between these. And I actually ran this particular test uh, more than once. I, I'm only going to show you one, um, but it was consistent. I crunched the numbers so you can see the one's done there, the other one's done now. Not big difference. But 
again, it was it was something that happened. It was kind of cool. So now we're going to do the one. This is the repeat of the last video. First, we're going to start off with the 90. And as you can see, it's already filling up faster. And I did actually crunch numbers between small bubbles versus large bubbles. Now, the 90 is 27% faster with uh, large bubbles. And then the cut one is 33% faster. <laughs> and the bend one uh, the, is 38% faster. And that is a significant difference between small bubbles and large bubbles. And it is a bigger significant difference between uh, 90 versus sweeping elbows. So it is actually kind of cool. That result there actually really interests me a lot because I tend to use a lot of large bubbles anyway because I like the way it moves the water. But that, again, was just observational. And I did do one of these tests before, uh, but I didn't have uh, as controlled an environment. I didn't have a dedicated pump to it. So again, uh, there was some possibility that uh, we're getting bleed off. Uh, but this is undeniable. This is uh, one pump doing all this. So it is, uh, it is rather quite interesting. So as you can see, this is large bubbles now, and it is filling at it better than the 90. That's, that's the same as last time. And now we're going to go to the sweeping one, which is, again, interesting because uh, now that we're moving more water, is it significantly faster uh, again? Like, is it significantly faster than the segment? And that's the curious thing here. So the 90, it was about 42 seconds to fill up. And then, of course, the cut sweeping elbow was 15% faster, which is roughly on par with what we did last time. And that's uh, 36 seconds. And this one is 32 seconds. So it is 24% 20, faster, which is a good difference. You know, we're getting into some interesting numbers here. And again, I ran this more than once. So we're going to do the same thing as last time. Uh, I'm going to fill these up, and they're going to freeze them as they finish. And you'll see that uh, the far right will finish first, and the middle, and then the left. So anyway, it was an interesting test. Let me know what you think about it all. And as always, if you like the style of video, please like and or subscribe. And let me know, always let me know what you think. And uh, especially if you have some inter interesting projects you want to do, which is kind of cool. So there you go. Well, that one's done. <laughs> the next one's going to come up here shortly. And then wait for the one, the final one. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And bye for now.